Oh, and I see we'll, we'll do our Miss Kim Lyle. I've got a picture of those later. Okay. Go ahead, Steve. Good morning and welcome to Weekend Walkabout in our Gardens and Years virtually. Coming to you from GardenAtoZ.org, this is Janet McConovich. And I'm Stephen Nicola. And we're talking today about uh, vegetable gardening, pest patrol in the, in the uh, vegetable garden. And actually, we're going to be talking about pest patrol wherever people want to talk about yeah. pest patrol. We'll just use the vegetables as our main thing. And we are going to work in our new format. So you will see some other stuff as we go along. Uh, there's my suspenders that I don't have on right now. Uh, and there's my dirty gloves that I don't have on right now. Yeah. What were you doing? Is that at I, Phyllis's house? I can't. <laughs> I was sandblasting or something. Who knows? And as, as uh, delightfully usual, uh, our daughter Sonia Nicola is with us as the moderator to watch the chat and line up questions so that we don't miss things during a question and answer session. And, and a little less usual. <laughs> yeah. She we, escaped from Canada, you guys. She's going to have to quarantine for two weeks to, in order to go back home once she gets back home, home and have to have two COVID tests to get back there. But we just couldn't stand it anymore. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. We haven't been able to see her since before COVID. So, But, but for, in order for her flying pleasure. fingers to work well, she's sitting in a different room and, uh, and doing the, the chat moderation. Okay. That's a... Uh, she left her beautiful garden in, in the hands of uh, the husband, yeah. including the vegetable garden in the back. So we've been writing a long time about gardening. Um, this will be our 40th year gardening professionally. And it was shortly after we started gardening professionally that we decided- It didn't take us long to decide. We didn't want to push snow in the winter. We had to find something to do. So talks and writing. Yeah, and especially since <clears throat> what we realized teaching. is that the things, the classes that we took the books that we read, they just couldn't cover it all, but real people could. The more people you talk to, the more you learned. So we have done most of our writing in, over most of our years as question and answer. So for 13 years in the Detroit News, people sent in questions and we chose some to answer. And we answered all the rest of them too, about 11,000 questions. It was the best way to deal with things. Now I have that turned off. Ah, sorry. It, it is definitely turned off. So if you could check that for me, Steve. So we're gonna uh, work through, through this we can walk about as we've started doing now in our new format where we our main feature is the vegetable garden pest patrol. But before that, let's tell you about what's going on in our garden toward the end of June. As we get in just past the middle of June, we're into delaying tactics now. Um, and we call this This Week in Our Gardens on our website. If you go to the What's Up tab on our website, you'll find a set of departments open underneath it. The first of which is This Week in Our Gardens. If you click on This Week in Our Gardens, you'll find a list of articles that we have that are about that season. We haven't shifted those yet no. because they're still the spring articles, but um, there are more than that. And uh, the idea is that this is a place where you can go to see what we're doing right now and what's going on right now. And what's going on right now is a lot of, like I say, delaying tactics. These are mums. Uh, they will, on their own, they'll bloom in August sometime. They're starting to set buds. Yeah, they're setting buds <clears throat> now. And so it's time to pinch them. That's the technical term is pinch, but the, uh, the reality term is cut. Um, I just took scissors and just cut them back by about half. Uh, there is a saying that you cut the mums three times by the 4th, three times by the 4th of July. These have been cut just the once. The idea is that you'll take off the, the wood that has become, the branches that have become old enough to start forming flower buds as the days get uh, start getting shorter after the, the, the yep. summer solstice and, uh, and cause them to bloom a little bit later, which is what we like to do. And we like them to be shorter. I took half the height off of these plants and they'll be shorter afterwards. So we're delaying right now. And you can delay other things, not just mums. Yeah. <coughs> this, is, uh, Sorry. this is the uh, Waterford Township Library where we, we and a bunch of other very fun people maintain some uh, volunteer gardens. This is their rain garden area. We take water off of the patio and bring it, it down to, to this lower yeah, area. It comes right down there. Yeah. And uh, in, this, in that rain garden, there are a couple of things that can be pinched might admire the, uh, the dark leafed hibiscus that's growing in there in combination with the philopendula or meadow sweet. We like that combination. Both very good in rain gardens. The meadow sweet is doing its thing looking kind of like Queen Anne's lace right now. There's one still blooming in the background, but most of them have bloomed already. So it's time to deadhead them to take out the part that doesn't look good. But 
um, at the same time that you're deadheading them and cutting down the camacea foliage. Do you see the bulb foliage in there as well? Because this little area had camacea blooming first. Camacea is also called Indian quamash or camas. It has a blue flower on it in the springtime. But those bulb, that bulb foliage can just be cut right out of the way. It could have been cut out of the way uh, a month ago, but people are hesitant to do that unless Janet yep. is there pointing at them and say, cut that down. Cut it. Um, and can deadhead. And then you can also take stems of this hibiscus and say, okay, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, About maybe 12, yeah, even. nine or nine or 10 or 12 main stems. I'm going to take three of those stems and cut them back by half because they too are getting ready to bloom as the days start getting shorter. The, uh, at the summer solstice, once the days start getting shorter after June 21st or 22nd, whenever the solstice is this year, um, the buds start setting on those. And if I set a plant, if I set a branch back so that it's a little bit retarded from the yes. rest of them. So the bloom down time. So what I'll get is three quarters of the plant blooming up on time at the end of July, beginning of August, and, and a quarter of the plant following up and blooming later. So unlike the um, uh, Philopendula, where we cut all the flower stalks off at once, I'd be deadheading over a longer period and seeing blooms over a longer period. And there are a lot of plants that you can cut back like that. Um, uh, asters, of course, like mums, we like them to bloom later and give us color in the fall, but balloon flower is something that you can clip back and have bloom later. Joe pie, not only later, but have it bloom shorter if you cut it back, obedient plant, which is also called false dragon's head, and perennial geratum are other things that we cut back. Perennial geratum has a long bloom on its own, yeah. and if you do that, it, it makes it even longer, and the bees and the butterflies really like that. Plant. They, they appreciate a late, a late, late. source of nectar. It's late already, to but to make it even later. It's, and it's it one of the reasons that we cut butterfly bush all the way back, and why we often cut back spirea and pocantilla, is that that delays them. So the, the dwarf spireas, if they have not been cut back, are probably already starting to bloom. If you cut them all the way back, they bloom a little bit later and you get that later bloom yep. in the year. You get your later bloom on Rosa Sharon, but that's spring cutbacks. Right now, these are, we're cutting back the things that want to bloom in the late summer and pushing them later Even in the summer. Even a little bit back. Yep. Yep. So we're delaying tactics now. And another delaying tactic and another bulb foliage that didn't get cut down, this is also at the Waterford Library. Um, our snapdragons are volunteers. We planted snapdragons as annuals one year and they continue to come back on their own. So they're putting on a great show right now. Isn't it amazing how they use the, the snapdragons decided to be the same color as the painting? As the DIA's uh, painting there, yep. Yeah. That's a new display that just went up. They didn't know that that was going to be our colors, I don't think. We um, didn't know about the snapdragons, they volunteers. At any rate, a little while ago, uh, early in the year, the, the Burke uh, the Korean spice viburnum was blooming and being a great show. Then the columbine was a great show. Um, uh, right now, the clematis just off outside your picture is a good show. And the snapdragons are carrying the show. We don't need to have more color. So the annuals, see them here? Three coleus, three, just three, placed 18 inches apart, are going to be glorious just in August wait. and September. And they will fill that space. They'll come on. They'll pick up the colors of the, the snapdragon still blooming in that uh, uh, splash in their leaves and the color of the gold uh, false uh, arbor writing in front of them. It'll be spectacular. I, this is just, this is an inspired planting by the volunteers at the garden. And, and I, my hat is off to whichever of them put it there. I don't know. They, uh, they bring their flowers, set them down. Everybody looks at them and says, okay, let's put these over here and those over there. So I, I wish more people would use annuals rather than for instant effect, would use them for planning that late summer uh, addition that they can really add. See here, there are four, five, sorry, five catharanthus or periwinkle. See the orange one? Giving you just a hint of what's going to happen later. Right now, the foliage is beautiful on that painted fern and the, and the brunera and the rogersia in the background and the perginia and the golden satin grass. You don't need to have something else going on. But later on, when the foliage starts looking a little bit tired and, and it's hot. And all of those foliage do begin to look tired. Yeah, yeah, it gets hot later in the summer. So delaying tactics, pressing the wrong button there. Um, now, not quite what you'd call a delaying tactic, but something of that. This is a Wygelia. Aren't they just gorgeous mops of a plant after they get done blooming? I think you can tell that it's got a couple of flowers at the ends of a couple of branches. But if you look, you can see brown specks along. It was in full bloom. 
It was or glorious. Hummingbird. It was great. And the hummingbird said thank you every morning when Zoom by and stop and and, uh, and drink. But now it's like, ah, it's like an unstuffed straw mattress. It, now. it shouldn't have been there in the first place. Yeah, this, some people say, uh, so how do you cut them back? That's how I cut them back. So it went from a mop to that. And is perfectly healthy and going to be just fine. Oh, it'll look like just what you <laughs> saw next summer. Until I dig it out of that ridiculously yeah, small it's, space. It's and a it someplace bad else. Spot. Um, What I'm doing is I'm leaving this new wood. See those nice straight shoots coming up from the bottom, which if the, if I let them still be covered in the heap would be distorted and curled, bent over next year. I took out most of the old wood. You can see some old wood in the background there that I left and just cut back. But what's happening is it bloomed on the extension that you see off to the right. You can see the flower, uh, the spent flower buds, those, all of those branches bloomed. And now below them comes a new shoot that can bloom a little at the end of the summer and will bloom heavily next year. So I can cut every branch right back to where that new shoot is coming from and leave just the new shoot. Or I can take out whole branches and favor the brand new shoots coming from the bottom which is what I do. I do a combination. I leave some new shoots and I cut some old shoots back to take off that curved part. Who wants that curved part? See that big curve? That's what makes it a mop. So you cut it back to where it's not curved anymore. And it's a lot coming out. It's a lot of wood. For people who um, grew up with the um, axiom, don't remove more than a third of the foliage. They had a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> when they saw that. Um, that has to do with training a young tree and, and avoiding getting suckering growth coming, it, it doesn't apply to fast growing plants like Wygelia. And as long as we do this cutting back on Wygelia, on Forsythia, um, lilac, I'll show you in a minute. And some spireas. And some spireas. As long as you do this by about the, the beginning of July, whatever wood you leave there is going to season and get ready to bloom for the next year. So you don't lose any bloom doing this. You just maintain a more respectable plant, which is what I've done with this dwarf lilac. This is a Miss Kim lilac, which was up with its flowers just in the window. So Axel could open up his window, look out and see flowers or open the window and smell the flowers right then. And I've cut it all the way back the same way that I just showed you the way Julia cut old branches all the way back down to the ground and then shorten everything else. And if you want to see the step by step on that, go back to look at our too much too big. Um, because it will show you step by step in there cutting that yeah, one back. Too much too big webinar. <laughs> but that's that's a dwarf lilac, which is not dwarf. No. People think dwarf means dwarf. Dwarf in this case means about eight feet tall rather than 18 feet tall. Like so it is a lilac. dwarf, yeah. but we wouldn't. And we are very sad about the uh, the milkweed. Um, the milkweed is there for the monarchs. We have uh, found a total of, of one monarch uh, egg in the neighborhood so far. And we learned just recently, reading in National Wildlife Federation's magazine, that uh, a whole herd flock wave of monarch butterflies last fall on its way southwest through the country from probably this area was killed by a, uh, an aerial spray program that was going on in, you know, I think, Indiana. I mean, thousands of monarchs fell dead. Uh, from that, and that was probably a lot of ours. And those are the monarchs that needed to uh, overwinter and then lay eggs and keep coming forward. So we may be very short on monarchs, and, and if you can favor them this year, do them in, in any way that you can. Also this week, since we had lots of wood, I was cutting things down and chopping things up. Uh, granddaughter Aubrey and I made a new fairy house, which is just woven in, with three pieces of willow wood. Yep. and put it out for the new gnome that our friend Patrick brought over to the garden. We also are doing cuttings. We told you about this last week in, in uh, growing from cuttings that we were doing cuttings. And someone asked, did we have a video? And I said very, in a very snobbish way, no, I don't read. And I thought, no, we should do a video. Mm -hmm. Just because I don't look at videos, if I have a choice between the video and a text article, I'll read the text article. Um, I guess because I can scan it quicker or something. But anyway, we said we should do a video and, and there are some cuttings that I'd like to make. There's a flocks laying on the cutting board right there that I've already stripped off the lower leaves, stripped off the lower leaves so that the node, there's two nodes exposed and I'm making a hole in the, my little potting mix um, 
container and getting ready to put them in. Now that is not Flock's opening act white, which Steve took about 42 pictures of this week because it was so gorgeous. This is an early blooming Flox hybrid, very disease resistant, absolutely glorious Flox. It's a whole opening act series. Um, it is, however, a patented plant. So I said, oh, much as we would like to make a bunch of those to sell Can't at the library it. sale, that's the reason that they patent these plants is because they took a long time and put money into developing it. And so they have a right to take money uh, from the propagation of that plant. So it's not that, it's a, it's a different flux. Uh, this is the willow that I took. And since I had cut back willow, it was uh, in the path and in the way. So I cut it back and it's the willow that we used to make the little fairy house. But willow is full of um, oxen. It's full of the plant hormone that promotes rooting. In the old times, a farmer who was making things from cuttings would often stick them underneath the willow tree because there's so much oxen in the soil from the, the willow. So I'm taking tips of the willow, just the tip just clusters little, of leaves. Little bitty. Because I need that, the apical marrow stem is what's full of oxen. I'm making <clears> that and I made tea out of them. There's my uh, tea glass bowl and, and, glass bowl. and poured Hot boiling water. water. Steeped, steeped them in boiling water and then used that water to water the cuttings. And that was, let's see, that was probably Wednesday. So three days later, the cuttings are fine. I made little terrariums for them, like we showed you in growing for cuttings. And as long as there's condensation in there, I know that it's moist. As long as I don't see something wilting, I don't take it out. And uh, they they're appear to be doing fine. Um, there is in here, and this is not the way that you should do it. Collect your cuttings when they're nice and moist. Don't expect results by putting, doing just one cutting of each right. type you want to do. Right, yeah. You're not likely to get 100% take, but for the sake of looking, we've got Helen's flower in the left corner there, and then uh, the flax next to it, a uh, um, butterfly bush, and a, uh, sorry, that one right there is the Colquitsia. Oops, sorry. Oh, this one's Colquitsia. Yeah, that's beauty bush and a butterfly bush, bush. and a piece of Sangasorba or Burnett in there. The other one is full of butterfly bush. Yep. So that's what's been going on in our yard and what questions have come up here. Well, Let's see. Oh, I think, oh, you know what? I We need to unmute. So muted. Can you hear me now? Now you are. Yeah. Sorry, that was, that was my headset. Um, uh, Therese is asking, how long do you steep those willow tips? I just let the water cool. Um, I don't know that there is an actual time. If there's going to be any oxen taken out, it'll be sometime when it's coming out in the heat. Yeah, great. Um, and uh, Mary is just suggesting another uh, um, video photo series, uh, how to make the fairy house, but also <laughs> be a good good demo. Uh, okay. The fairy house got a, got a lot of traction in the chat. Um, <laughs> About why Julia as well. Uh, Mary Lou is curious if your advice pertains to sonic bloom that uh, blooms that second time. Yes, why, almost all of the white Julia bloom a second time. Wait, sonic bloom, isn't that one of the lilacs? Uh oh. I... It might be a lilac. And, I'm uh, not sure. And I haven't played around with the, with the re, if it's the, oh. if sonic bloom is the re blooming lilac, I haven't messed around oh, with sonic Google, bloom. Google thinks that it's a uh, white Julia. Okay. Uh, yeah. The proven winners. Yep. Yeah, oh. all of the white julius will bloom a second time. I guess maybe maybe the proven winners people found one that blooms, blooms. more heavily. But yeah, um, what it's going to be, the second bloom on the white julius is going to come on those new shoots. So as long as you favor the new shoots, you're going to get more bloom. Um, I did remove some new shoots because there were new shoots coming from all kinds of places on that. But I don't want new shoots coming in in a totally scary looking huge heap of a plant, anyways. <laughs> Um, and Pat's curious, as it looks like you cut more than a third of the Wygelia. Won't it be too stressed? No, it won't be. Uh, the, the, no, that's what we were the saying. One, the one third rule um, it was, was coined in order to help people understand when they're training a new tree and trying to get it into shape, you don't want to take off more than a third of the foliage at one time because that stimulates suckering growth. And most people who are training a new tree don't want suckering growth. They want straight branches where they choose for their branches to be. It doesn't apply to shrubs and certainly not to fast growing. Ones and especially shrubs. healthy growing. If it's healthy. Yeah, go ahead and cut it. You could whack them pretty good. And does it stress yeah. them? Anytime we, anytime we approach a plant with pruners, we stress them. I think all you have to they do is feel stand the there and think about it. They get stressed. Yeah. I mean, 
Yep. And there's also, as I was saying in the chat, there's the human stress too, and that watching Janet Prune is stressful for many humans because uh, we, we assume that that is uh, the most ruthless thing someone could do in a yard. Yeah, just cutting and throwing. That's what I do. Cut, throw, cut, throw. Get this stuff out of here. Our, yep. our neighbor, Patrick, was over helping me. And he said, what are you doing? <laughs> I, said, I said, if you could just kind of keep these things from... Uh, from landing on and breaking anything, uh, I'd appreciate it. He said, you're taking so much. I said, it's okay, Patrick, it's okay. And uh, another <laughs> way, Julia, question. Uh, Stacy asks, um, I have one that has a lot of dead branching. Can I just cut it all the way down this time of year? You can. Um, anything that you cut all the way back this time of year, keep in mind that it's growing back with soft, succulent new growth at a time when it's gonna be quite hot and make sure that that plant doesn't want for water because you'll feel sad if you see the leaf scorch on the new foliage, on the new growth. Yeah. Uh, Polly says, I have an aster that's sprawling in the garden. How much can I cut it back? I, I um, when they sprawl, <laughs> asters, when, when they sprawl, I tend to say, I could do without you and I cut them all the way back and they come back. Um, so if, if it's growing in a good place and it's a good aster, just cut it all the way back and, and don't even worry about it. Or do yeah. like Gutri Jekyll, use the sprawl clip off the branches that have turned upright and clip just the tips of, so the branch is laying on the ground, laying on the ground. <laughs> How come I can never figure out which one? Laying on the ground and its tip is starting to grow upright. Clip the tip and cause its side branches to come up and you might get a, a neat kind of effect of a, of, a, uh, of a plant filling in from its own side branches coming up vertically from the ground. Yep. And uh, Wygelia has struck a nerve. Kathleen says that whenever she cuts Wygelia, I always end up with the ugly stumps at the bottom. Can't quite get the saw through without damaging new shoots. Any tips? They look so ugly. No, I have no tips on that. I've sometimes used a keyhole saw, a little tiny saw that you kind of go back and forth a little oh, to get out. To, uh, it's, it's very difficult. What I want is a Dremel tool. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the correct. I want a thing I can put on the end of a drill, an electric drill, and do like the dentist does when they take a burr off of your tooth, you know, just go err and, and, and whittle it down that way. But I have not yet found, and I haven't looked real hard, but um, I'm sure that Daryl would tell me if one exists to, to uh, chisel away that way. Yeah. Did, uh, is that a foxtail lily on screen? It yes, is. yes. And I just noticed that there was a, another species of Pollinator. Oh, those little sweat bees, yeah. 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 That is, um, all right, let's do one more cutting back question. Uh, Althea says, many people recommend leaving foliage on the ephemerals until it's brown. Some even say that braiding will reduce bulb resource, resources. Why do you say that is not important? Um, I, I say that it's important for a plant to, to use the, the photosynthates, the starches that it can make in its leaves um, when it's a young plant and it is building up bulk to become a blooming age plant. And to have every day in the sun is important when you're taking a bulb that is just a little thing as big as your thumb and trying to grow it on to be a big daffodil. But once it already is a big daffodil, the extra energy is not going to go into that bulb. It's going to go into side bulbs and it's going to go into a bigger cluster that is crowded more quickly. It gets crowded and then they get the the bulbs actually get smaller and, and yeah, right and they don't bloom just like a crowded day lily or a crowded pasta so we we started cutting things back when we said you're big enough the cluster is big enough i don't want to look at you um it, it goes along with our you don't know the plant until you killed it i said i don't care anymore if it's going to kill you i'm cutting you back and we started cutting them back a long time ago and it, we have not lost any any flowers <clears throat> we get a good show um so it, it is true that the, the plant can use that photosynthate, but what it uses it for when you're a grower in the field, trying to grow your bulbs on to sellable size versus what a home garden is, is a totally different thing. Yeah. As for braiding them, if you're going to braid the leaf, think about the fact that you're crossing leaves over each other. You are blocking them from the sun. If you're gonna braid them, you probably cut a third of the foliage off from the sun. So just cut them back by a third or cut them back more. But I have better things to do than to sit and braid leaves with a roll them up and rubber band and, them. And with a lot of our ephemerals, the woodland, we have other plants coming to take their, their place. So we don't worry about That's cutting right. them back as off either. Yeah, we have a lot of places where we just let them plants The up. woodland ephemerals, the woodland wildflowers, we rarely cut the foliage on them because something is coming to cover them up. Yeah. Okay. All right, great. Um, and then just really quickly, another willow uh, question for the willow tea. Um, Janet's asking, is it just the tip of 
the willow leaves? Is it just leaves? What do you actually put into boil? The, the tip, I, I took the tips off. All I want is the tip, 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 but I'm not about to worry about that. It's the tip that's most full of oxen. And so that's what I really want to use. So it's all the tips of the branches that I took and used. The whole willow has a lot more oxen than, than other plants, but um, the okay. tips are loaded. All right, well, I will keep the rest of the questions for uh, for later. Thank you. All right. So that's it for the in our garden section of today's webinar. And next we'll move on to um, the vegetable garden itself. Thanks for being with us and stay tuned if you want to listen to the entire thing. <laughs>